to another live broadcast with MedStar Health. My name is Karen Zingle, and I'm joined today by orthopedic foot and ankle specialist, Dr. Jacob Wisbeck from MedStar Orthopedic Institute. Today we're gonna to be discussing foot, um, I'm sorry, ankle fractures. If you have any questions for Dr. Wisbeck as we discuss foot, uh, ankle fractures, please ask them in the comments below. Dr. Wisbeck, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. So, um, as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about broken ankles. Mm -hmm. What are some of the different types of fractures that someone could get? There are so many. Um, there are very simple fractures. You can have fractures that act like sprains. You can have fractures from high energy injuries, such as falling off ladders and trees and car wrecks. Sports related injuries, you can have stress fractures. There are just uh, all sorts of fractures. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes what people think are ankle fractures are actually foot fractures. And so sometimes a further workup is necessary. But essentially, you can get them anytime, anywhere, uh, re really with any injury. Okay, thank you. So, what are some of the common causes of fractures? Well, I just mentioned sports injuries. Is, mm -hmm. it, for me, uh, I do a lot of sports related patients, uh, mm -hmm. so a lot of sports injuries. Stepping off of curbs, uh, wow. slipping on yeah. ice, uh, car wrecks, um, motor vehicle accidents, uh, motorcycle injuries, uh, people that work from heights, uh, carpenters, roofers, tree folks falling out of trees, um, you know, kids falling off of trees, off of uh, monkey bars or, or whatever they, they are playing on these days, trampoline parks. It really is kind of, you know, any activity can really wow. lead to it. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. So how would, would you know if you fractured your ankle? Typically there's a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, you know, the exceptions are people who can't feel things, you know, diabetics mm -hmm. with neuropathy, they, that's a little bit harder to figure out. And they, for those folks, they, they typically get a lot of swelling. Um, most people have difficulty walking, excuse me, walking on it uh, mm -hmm. after the injury. Um, you're limping around. Um, some people hear a pop. Um, yeah. You know, it's usually a, a pretty sharp pain. But it doesn't always have to be. Stress fractures can be just pain that's progressive over time with activity. Um, so getting it figured out uh, with an x-ray and, and seeing an orthopedic surgeon is the best way of doing it. Great. What about a fracture in your foot? Very similar. Um, you know, foot injuries can be falling into holes or twisting your foot. Sometimes you have a combination of a foot and ankle fracture, mm -hmm. uh, where you twist your foot and twist your ankle. Um, but similar symptoms where you're having difficulty walking around. Uh, stress fractures are, are actually very common in the foot uh, and can be anywhere in the foot. Uh, 28 bones, 33 joints, and any of those bones can get fractured. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier about seeing a physician. How do you know when the pain is severe enough to uh, see a physician? Uh, typical rule of thumb for me, if you wake up the next day worse off than you woke up the day before, then, then you know, seeing a physician is a good idea. Um, obviously, bigger injuries, um, the sharper pains, the inability to walk on your foot, mm -hmm. um, those are all easy things to say, hey, I need to go get an x-ray, I need to get this checked out. Um, but uh, even things that really may not be acute or you can't remember the injury, uh, if things are progressing in the wrong direction, it's time to get it looked at. Good, good to know. <clears throat> so what can you do immediately if you suspect that you've broken your ankle or foot? Well, if, if you're having trouble walking on it, that's your body telling you you shouldn't be walking on it. Right. So, so get off of it. Get crutches mm -hmm. if you can. Uh, you know, emergency room visits, I know getting into to an emergency room has this you know, nervousness to it, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of prompt cares. Uh, mm -hmm. MedStar has uh, several prompt cares around the area, right. urgent care facilities, any place where you get an x-ray just to make sure nothing, nothing's going on where it's not okay to walk on mm -hmm. your foot or ankle. Um, icing it, keeping the swelling down, uh, all those things are, are the, uh, the typical kind of initial first aid, uh, but really staying off of it until you can figure out what's going on is really important. Okay, good. So we have um, got some questions from our Facebook audience. This one's from Randy. Randy, thank you for your question. He said, my wife has a broken ankle with two plates and screws for many years now. Mm -hmm. She has been through extreme pain and swelling for many years. Is there a replacement ankle available? Um, there are replacement ankles available, and what, without seeing x-rays or the patient, <coughs> you can say this most commonly would be a post-traumatic or after the injury arthritis of the ankle, and that happens. Uh, no matter how good the, the surgery was, uh, sometimes that's 
an end result. Um, so that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. For years and years of pain and swelling, however, we need to make sure other things aren't going on, like a, a low-grade infection that's been going on, or hardware pain, or, or other reasons. Uh, sometimes there's been a, an injury to the joint, like a scuff in the cartilage that can be treated with an arthroscopy, uh, meaning an ankle scope, as opposed to having to do a full-on replacement. So the replacements are available, and they're prop, excuse me, they're primarily for an arthritis condition or a post-traumatic arthritis, but you need to make sure that's the problem before you go down that road. Okay, thank you. This question is from India. I broke my ankle back in 2009, which was put back together in numerous screws and brackets. I'm now suffering from pain after minimal exercise. Any suggestions? Uh, a very Idea. similar response to that, um, figuring out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can have that post-traumatic arthritis or joint pain or stiffness, but again, was there another injury that wasn't picked up in addition to that initial fracture? Or is there something else going on? Is it a hardware problem? Does she have completely, some, just something different completely going on? Mm -hmm. um, just because you fractured your ankle doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to have that as the primary source of pain in your ankle. There could be other things going on that could be treated as well. Mm -hmm. um, so getting that evaluation is really uh, a good idea. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, India. So let's talk about treatment options. What are the treatment options for fractures? The treatment options for fractures are really all over the board. Um, in our world, casting is really not used that much anymore mm -hmm. other, for, other than for young individuals and kids. Um, for adults, uh, boot brace wear, you can be weight bearing in the boot brace for some fractures. Uh, again, some fractures are actually treated more like sprains than fractures. Mm -hmm. uh, unstable fractures that, that the ankle is really injured in more than one place, inside out, or, or dis, uh, significantly displaced fractures. Those are things that we really are looking at surgery to get them as perfect as we can. Um, not everybody's going to agree in terms of surgeons what to fix, what not to fix, and, and with our experience and, and coming here, uh, you can pretty much get a good, reliable answer that, that and, and discussion about what is the best option for you. Mm -hmm. um, not everything re requires surgery, but on the other side of the coin, when it's indicated, it's indicated, and we will take our time to explain why that is. Okay. So you just mentioned, so all fractures don't necessarily lead to surgery. Absolutely not, no. Um, many fractures that are either stable, non-displaced, um, uh, they can be treated either non-weight bearing in a boot or even a cast if people are doing those, or uh, weight bearing in a boot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just a lace-up ankle brace. Um, sometimes you know, people come in six, seven weeks out and didn't even realize they broke their ankle and they've done just fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's really the ones that are, are significantly displaced or we feel that getting it back together gives you a better long-term outcome. Mm -hmm. We talked about that requires surgery. And, and we talked about that post-traumatic arthritis. Um, getting things back together can help to minimize not necessarily what the injury has given you in terms mm -hmm. of that risk of developing that arthritis, but from that point forward, how perfect can we make it to minimize that risk of having long-term problems? Right, great. So what is the typical recovery from a fracture? That depends on a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the textbooks will tell orthopedic surgeons six to 12 weeks to recover from fractures. Mm -hmm. uh, again, is that a simple fracture that was treated with a surgery with plates and screws that we can get you going early as in three to four weeks. Um, do you need to stay off of it for at least six weeks? Is it a, a, a bigger injury to the joint, maybe a, a motor vehicle accident or fall from a height where the joint itself was uh, impacted in a way that you need to take more time off, up to three months to stay off of it. Yeah. All fractures really have their own recovery time, so it's hard to say in general. but. Typically, people are getting better in about that four to 12 week mark. Some things take longer, but mm -hmm. that's the typical area. Okay, very good, thank you. What should be expected after a fracture heals? Well, we're hoping to get you back to everything you were doing beforehand. Um, and again, that's part of the discussions with your, your surgeon and the surgeon's experience. Understanding what to expect is important for a good mm -hmm. outcome. Uh, many fractures you can expect to easily get back to where you were, uh, and, and other fractures uh, you can expect not to have the same ankle you had the day before the injury. Um, 
you do the best you can, you get things as perfect as possible, and you rely on your surgeon's technical skill and, and knowledge. Uh, but in the end, sometimes that injury provides an outcome that's not exactly where you were the day before, but we will do our best to get you back to, to everything you were doing the day before. Uh, all activities, sports, that's our anticipation, that's our mm -hmm. hope. Yeah. Uh, it's just not always guaranteed based on the injury. Right, okay. So what makes people more susceptible to fractures? Is there anything people can do to proactively prevent them? Well, there's, there's a couple of, of responses to that. One is people who are more involved in, in sports and athletics and are working on roofs and are cutting limbs down um, and are doing even silly things like driving recklessly and stuff like that, of course, they're more at risk for injury. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always one side of it. On the other side, accidents happen, and they happen to everyone. Um, for people who are having accidents happen that are not causing fractures in most other individuals, mm -hmm. those are the people we get concerned about in terms of their bone health. Mm. Do they have low D, do, vitamin D? Do they have low calcium? Uh, is there another endocrine problem that's going on? And we have great endocrinologists here that deal with bone metabolism that we refer to when we have those concerns. Mm -hmm. Ankle fractures in general aren't the, the antenna that go up in terms of those fragility fractures that we worry about with osteoporosis, uh, it, but you, any fracture has to be considered. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, it's hip fractures and upper extremity fractures that are more, you know, that you see more sending to the primary care docs or, or folks for all the DEXA scans and stuff. But uh, we absolutely consider all fractures as to whether or not the mechanism made sense for that individual and is there further workup needed. Mm -hmm. That's great information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what is the benefit of seeking out an orthopedic foot and ankle specialist? I think that in seeking out an orthopedic foot and ankle specialist, you have good reliability that you're dealing with a medical physician that has been through an extensive residency program in orthopedics and then also has that subspecialty training in the area of focus that you want addressed. Similar to folks that do just knee and hips, uh, just people that do hand, um, shoulder and elbow. The best part about MedStar Health is that's what we've got. We've got all specialists here um, it, it, for the most part, if not all specialists at this point in time, that are fellowship trained, that are focusing on doing those things that they're very good at, that they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, and our group here is some of the best in the world. Yeah. Well, so. Let's talk about MedStar Orthopedic Institute. Mm -hmm. why, would, why should someone choose MedStar Orthopedic Institute for uh, orthopedic foot and ankle care? Specifically for the foot and ankle care, um, our guys are great. Uh, we have tons of experience. Um, we all kind of not only do our foot and ankle work, but we all kind of have our niches that we are doing. Um, and for foot and ankle care, um, it doesn't get any better. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we have four of us here uh, at Union Memorial. Um, and. Uh, uh, it's just a, a great group. We have a residency program here, but we also have uh, one of the best, if not the best, foot and ankle fellowships uh, in the country. And so we're not only training our residents to be great orthopedic surgeons and teaching them foot and ankle, but we're teaching those orthopedic surgeons who have graduated residency to be orthopedic surgeons mm -hmm. who want to be specialists in foot and ankle, but we're actually teaching them too. And so we have to be on our game as well right. um, and, and up to speed with all the, the latest and greatest and uh, technically good so that we, they can learn from us. So it all adds up to a fantastic experience for the patient. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. No Anything else you'd like to share with our audience today? I think no, you covered a no, lot. No, no, very good. <laughs> thank you for having me. This has been yeah, great. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. For more information about MedStar Orthopedic Institute or schedule an appointment with Dr. Wisbeck, visit medstarortho.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank, thank you, you for, for thank being you. here. Appreciate it.